Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about cracking. Now cracking is the second chemical process that you need to know um, for this topic for the organic chemistry. Now we've already covered fractional distillation. You need to make sure you know the process of fractional distillation and how we use that to separate the different fractions of alkane hydrocarbons from the mixture of crude oil. Um, cracking is the second process. So up until now, we've only spoken about alkanes, we've only spoken about saturated hydrocarbons, uh, but we're gonna start talking about alkenes, and again, that's where cracking comes in. So a variety of uh, questions here, we're not gonna be able to answer all of them yet, but some of them we certainly are. Uh, we can answer what is a hydrocarbon. So it's a molecule that contains carbon, and hydrogen only. Right, cracking we haven't covered yet, alkenes we haven't covered yet. General formula for alkanes however we should know that. So we should know that for every carbon there are twice as many hydrogens plus two. So those are the, two, the one on either end. So every carbon has two hydrogens and then there's those two extras on either end of the molecule. Conditions for cracking, difference between alkanes and alkenes, we haven't covered that yet. What does saturated mean? So we should know, contains only single bonds. And has the maximum number of hydrogens. Now, unsaturated, I'm sure we can work out what that's going to be from this, but we will come back to that. What are the products of cracking? We'll do that later. The positive test for alkenes, the solutions we can use to test for alkenes, and three products from the fractional column. Now, we can do that one. Um, so, starting at the top, going down, you can have LPGs, you can have naphtha, you can have petrol, diesel, Kerosene, I'm trying to think what else, uh, fuel oil, bitumen, they're just one of the ones you could have used. You only needed three, obviously. I think the ones you most like to remember, let's be honest, are going to be the ones at the top, petrol, diesel, kerosene, LPGs. You know, these are the ones you're more familiar with. And actually, that's kind of relevant to what we're going to be, uh, going to be talking about uh, next. So, so cracking is a chemical process. Now, the reason for cracking, now like we said, now I'm just gonna use this piece of paper here. So if we went and got some uh, crude oil, if we all chipped in together, I think we'd need about $50, we could get ourselves a barrel of crude oil, okay? And we know that it is a mixture. And in this crude oil, it is a mixture of alkane hydrocarbons. So they're all saturated, they're all um, hydrocarbons, so they all contain carbon and hydrogen. The only difference between them is how many carbons are in their chain. Now, we used fractional distillation to separate those different fractions. You know, we can separate them into LPGs, into naphtha, into petrol, into diesel, into kerosene. Um, and what you notice is that all of those shorter chain hydrocarbons are really useful as fuels. Okay, so short chain hydrocarbons make good fuels. Because when we were looking at the properties of short chain hydrocarbons, we found that they were very flammable and they were easy to ignite. So they make really good fuels. And because they got really you know, really useful as fuels, they have a high demand. So therefore, they are in high demand. So of all of those fractions that we spoke about that come from crude oil, the short chain hydrocarbons are in much, much higher demand than the long chain hydrocarbons. Now the long chain hydrocarbons are useful, but not 
as as usable because they can't be used as fuels as easily they've got a much much lower demand okay and the issue is if you had a barrel of crude oil it doesn't contain all of those fractions equally what you find is it contains a much larger portion of long chain hydrocarbons and a relatively small amount of short chain hydrocarbons and the issue we have here is the short chain hydrocarbons have a really high demand the long chain have a low demand and despite having really high demand we've actually got quite a short supply for every barrel that we buy only that much of it is our short chain hydrocarbons so it's got a low supply whereas the long chain hydrocarbons you know they don't we don't need that many of them yet for every barrel of crude oil we extract that much of it is long chain hydrocarbons so it's got a very high supply so we need more of the short chains but we don't have very much of it and we don't need very much of the long chains but we've got quite a lot of it so the one answer to this really is how do we get more short chain hydrocarbons and we need to remember that crude oil is a finite resource so before you start thinking that's fine we'll just dig up more that's not a long-term solution so how are we going to get more of these short chain hydrocarbons without just digging up more crude oil and that's where cracking comes in cracking is a chemical process where we can take these long chain hydrocarbons that are in low demand and high supply and we can break them down to produce short chain hydrocarbons which are in high demand and low supply so cracking allows us to make more of these short chain hydrocarbons and remember they're in high demand because they're useful as fuels so if we have long chain hydrocarbons which are in high supply low demand we are able to crack them to produce our short chain hydrocarbons which are in high demand low supply so that brings us to the process of cracking itself so quick question here you know is cracking important for daily life and industry justify your answer so you can answer that um, based on what you think so far so you know why do we crack large hydrocarbons to obtain more useful short chain hydrocarbons that have a high demand but low supply okay and importantly what two types of hydrocarbon are produced in cracking so you know if we take a, a an example a long chain hydrocarbon I don't know just do decane right, bear with me a second get my hydrogens on there so relatively speaking it's a long chain hydrocarbon it's not the longest but it's the longest one I'm willing to draw for this example so here's my long chain hydrocarbon and if I were to crack it and all you're doing is you're breaking one of those bonds doesn't really matter which one could break that one there and end up with two different molecules could break that one there and end up with two different molecules could break it there and there and end up with three different molecules the problem is that the carbons need to have four bonds so if I were to break this bond here well this carbon no longer has four bonds and neither does this one so normally the carbons would bond to hydrogens to make up their bonds but you're not adding any hydrogen there's no extra hydrogens floating around so 
every time you break one of these bonds to crack the molecule, um, the only way it's able to get four bonds around each carbon is to form double bonds between the carbons because there's no spare hydrogens lying around. So let's say that I broke this molecule here and I broke it right there. That's the bond I was going to break. What it would do is it would create a double bond between those two carbons and then the rest would form an alkane like normal one. Right, just draw the hydrogens. So our starting molecule, this uh, it's an alkane and it has 10 carbons, so this was decane. Okay, and it's produced two products. It's produced an alkane, all single bonds, and it's got eight carbons. So this is octane. And what we've got now for the first time is an alkene. Okay, and you can tell it's an alkene because it's got this double bond here. And it's got two carbons, so it's going to be eth -ene. So in cracking, you always get an alkane and an alkene. An alkene is guaranteed because as soon as you break one of those bonds, the carbons haven't got four bonds. They don't have any additional hydrogens that they can bond to. So the only way that the carbons can get their four bonds is by forming double bonds. So you're always going to get an alkene. Now, sometimes you just get one alkene, one alkane. Sometimes you're going to get two alkenes, one alkane. But you will always get at least one alkene. And what you'll notice is, you know, I started with 10 carbons. I've ended with 10 carbons. I started with uh, 22 hydrogens. I've ended with 22 hydrogens. So it's really important that it balances. Um, but you always guaranteed get at least one alkene. And if you're asked to write an equation for the cracking of a molecule, the easiest alkene to go for is ethene because it's the smallest alkene possible. Because to make an alkene, you need a double bond between two carbons. So you can't have methene because that's only got one carbon. So it can't possibly form a double bond. Whereas ethene is the smallest alkene that you can make because you need two carbons in order to have a double bond. So if you were asked, you know, if this was the question, write the equation for the cracking of decane, then do ethene first. It's the simplest, easiest alkene to draw. And then count how many carbons are left. Well, if I take them two off, I'm left with eight. So I'm going to draw octane. So going back to the student pack, what two types of hydrocarbon are produced in cracking? Well, we have an alkane and an alkene. Okay, what might be produced when dodecane is cracked? Well, actually, that was the example I've drawn down here. So you can copy that. You can copy that into there, can't you? So there's... Oh, no, that's not dodecane. Sorry, that's decane. Okay, I suppose we'll do it again. So dodecane is 12. And it's an alkane. So C12... H and it will be twice as many, so that's 24 plus 2 plus 2 more, so it'll be 26. And again, there's any number of possibilities of what it could break down into, but the easiest thing to do is to just do ethene. Okay, so ethene is going to be C2H4. And what does that leave us with? That leaves us with 10 carbons. And that leaves us with 22 hydrogens. Okay, another example. C12H26. Okay, well, what if we let it break down into propene rather than ethene? So propene will be C3H6. What does that leave us with? C9H6. 
H20. Okay, either one of those works. And what you'll notice is these alkenes have a slightly different general formula to the alkanes. Now the alkanes were all Cn, H2, N plus 2, but the alkenes are all going to be Cn, H2, N. Because every time you add a double bond, you lose two hydrogens, so you don't need that plus 2 anymore. So alkenes have this general formula. So we've got two types of cracking that we need to talk about. This is the one they will talk about most often, okay? So if they don't specify, if they just say cracking, then they're actually talking about catalytic cracking. But um, if they do specify thermal cracking, then it is slightly different. So thermal cracking is a high temperature and a high pressure. and it will break our hydrocarbon down. Catalytic cracking will also be a high temperature and with a catalyst, as the name suggests. Okay, now this is the preferred option. Okay, this is preferred to thermal cracking. Okay, now, number one, it requires a lower pressure therefore cost less. And number two, it produces more short chain alkanes. Whereas thermal cracking, you tend to get, uh, you do get some short chain alkanes, of course you do, but you tend to get more alkenes produced. You know, like I said, up here, we said one alkene, one alkane. Catalytic cracking is more likely to do that. Thermal cracking will give you a larger number of uh, alkene molecules, which they are useful, but in terms of this process, we're trying to obtain short chain alkanes. So catalytic cracking produces more short chain alkanes. So it is the, uh, the, preferred, uh, the preferred process. So make sure you know this. So this. This is the one you absolutely must know. Catalytic cracking. Uh, high temperature and a catalyst. Make sure you say high temperature. Don't just say heat or hot. Say high temperature catalyst. And it breaks down large hydrocarbon molecules into short chain hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon molecules, which have a much higher demand um, because they're useful as fuels. So let's go back to this thing quickly. You know, so what is cracking? Okay, is a chemical process. that breaks down long chain hydrocarbons into short chain hydrocarbons. Okay, the general formula for alkenes, Cn, H2n, it's very similar to the alkanes, but remember, you lose two hydrogens for the double bond, so it's only CnH2n rather than CnH2n plus 2. Uh, what are the conditions for cracking? Now, it hasn't specified, so I'm going to say catalytic cracking, high temperature, and a catalyst. What is the difference between alkanes and alkenes? Okay. Alkanes have only single bonds. Alkenes contain a double bond. Okay, what does unsaturated mean? Well, unsaturated means contains a double bond. And therefore doesn't have the maximum number of hydrogens. What are the products of cracking? You get an alkene and an alkane. 
And then the only other thing we need to talk about is the positive test for an alkene. So I'm going to get rid of this one because it's kind of a duplication. So what is the positive test for an alkene? Okay, so you add bromine water, which is just bromine that has been dissolved in water. Okay, so you take some bromine, you dissolve it in water, and this is orange, okay, this solution is orange. And if an alkene is present, it goes colorless. Okay, so very quickly, um, if we just have an alkene here, so let's have ethene, because it is our simplest alkene. So there is ethene. And we add bromine water to it. Now it's really important that you remember that this is orange. This solution here is orange and it will react with the alkene. And what will happen is this double bond will break and it will form bonds with the bromines. And we end up with bromo ethane and importantly this is colorless so that's our color change it's going from orange or orange orange to colorless because that double bond breaks and it forms bonds with the bromine and forms a completely new molecule now alkanes cannot do this alkanes don't have a double bond so they can't react with the bromine so nothing would happen so if i had two test tubes and i put an alkane in one and an alkene in the other and i added bromine water to both the alkane would do nothing it would stay orange it wouldn't react but the alkene because it has a double bond will be able to react forming bromoethane and it will change from orange to colorless. So if you wanted to prove if you had an alkane or an alkene, you would add bromine water. If it goes from orange to colorless, then you've proven that you have an alkene. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is this practical here. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to uh, I'm not going to be able to film this practical for you, but what I'll do is I'll make another video uh, at a later date, hopefully showing you this practical, um, and we'll be able to go through the results. Okay, but that will be coming at a later date, uh, probably after Easter will be the soonest I'll be able to get back into the lab and film that for you. But just you know, keep tabs on the uh, on the playlist, and it, you know if if you subscribe, you'll get notifications, obviously. Um, but just keep tabs on the playlist and I'll upload it as soon as it's as soon as it's ready. But until then, there's some exam questions on these pages here. So that's starting on page 125, going to page 127. Not very many, won't take you very long. And again, any questions, anything that didn't make sense, anything you want me to elaborate on, then please just drop me a comment on show my homework and I'll get back to you.